I'm Kent and you're watching Weekend Adventure Rides. This week we are going to rebuild the forks on the Harley Sportster. These are a 39 millimeter fork. It is an 04 to 06, but like most of the 39 millimeter forks, this same procedure will be used. So let's look at some of the products that we're gonna use for this rebuild. To start out with, I use the Drag Specialties Fork Slider Rebuild Kit. This does come with the new bushings and all of the new seals. The factory damper rods will be replaced with these longer damper rods from Till Death Cycles. These are three inches longer than stock for this application. So this is gonna lengthen our forks by three inches. And they advertise it as increasing ride quality along with uh, amount of fork travel. For the fork oil that I'll be using, this is Maxima uh, V-Twin fork oil. This is 20 weight, so we're gonna go a little heavier with the fork oil. The fork sliders, I've cleaned these up. I did use a paint stripper on these and then a wire wheel to get rid of all of the black that's on there. I'm going to be repainting these after we get them all put back together. When I am reassembling this bike and all the parts, I am using the climber manual. Uh, this is for the Harley XL Sportster 04 to 13. All right, with the fork leg off the bike, I've got the fork leg in a vise here. Now I'm gonna knock this little cover off to get started taking this fork apart. Now I'm just gonna use a flathead screwdriver and a little hammer, we'll knock this cover off. All right, so that's off. Now I've got this oil pan here and there's a little Phillips head screw here at the bottom that allows the oil to drain out. So I'm just gonna take that off. Set that aside. And when I put the fork up, you can see the oil starting to run out of there. We'll let that drain for a little bit. Then push down on the fork leg here. That's gonna force some of the oil out. Then I'm gonna put this back on there. The reason I did that first is I wanna limit some of the mess I'm gonna make here when I pull this plug out of the bottom. There is a hex head screw in the bottom. That is, a, I have a six millimeter here for that. So let's put this in the vise, we'll pull that out. Okay, to get this out, I've got this Allen key here. Now I'll show you a trick to get this out using the addition of a box end wrench. So we put the Allen key in, now take the box end wrench, I'm gonna put it over the top like this. Gives me some more leverage here. Try not to bend your knuckles. Okay, got that broke free. Now that's just gonna come out. Okay, I think that's loose now. So we'll move back over to the oil pan. Okay, with that bolt at the bottom loosened up, we'll flip this over and that's gonna fall out. Don't drop it in the oil pan. I'm gonna take this little drain screw out and that'll allow the fork oil to kind of come out of there a little easier. So I'm gonna set this aside for a second and just let it drain. Okay, now that we've got the fork mostly drained out, we're going to uh, pull the dust seal on top. For that, you just need a flathead screwdriver. So flathead screwdriver here, just go under the dust seal and carefully kind of pry that up. Okay, we'll slide that off. There is a retaining ring in here. You can just use a flathead screwdriver. There's some little indents in it to get the screwdriver in, kind of pop it up and work around. And that's just gonna come out. Ring looks like that. See those little indents? Okay, now inside of here, we have the actual oil seal. Now to get this out, we use the fork leg here as like a slide hammer. So I'm just gonna pull up on this. Carefully, you see it coming out. There we go. And then I'm gonna set this aside on the oil pan. And we've got that pretty well disassembled here. I'm gonna use some brake clean to clean out this and all the surfaces. Okay, let's take apart the rest of the fork here. So in the bottom, on the bottom of the fork is this piece here. So like this. Okay, and then you have these brass bushings. Now there's a split in them that you can take and put a flathead screwdriver in. And then you're just gonna twist it and then you can push it up 
and off the fork. Okay, and then set that aside in order. Now this next bushing is just gonna slide off. And then we have this steel ring and then the oil seal, which I'm gonna push down the other way. Okay, oil seal. I'm gonna have to put this in the vise because I've already taken the treble clamp apart. You don't wanna scuff this fork leg here or fork tube. So I'm gonna put this cloth over it before I put it in the vise. Like so. Let's see if we can do this. And I'm just gonna snug it up really tight there. Okay, and then using an adjustable wrench, we'll start taking off this top. Now this is under spring pressure, so it's gonna pop off and scare everyone like a jack-in-the-box. So don't put your face in front of it. There we go, broke it free. There's about one inch of threads, maybe a tad less. I'm just gonna put my hand over it, but it's gonna pop here in a second. There we go. Dropped it, dang it. Okay, no harm, no foul. We're good to go there, so we'll set that aside. As we take the spring out, the top spring, you'll see that the looser wrap is at the top, and then as you go down, these actually are a tighter wrap progressive spring. So we'll just clean that off really quick, and I'm gonna set that aside. And I'm just gonna make sure all the oil's out of here. We don't make a huge mess. There we go, a little oil. Okay, and then the last two pieces in the bottom. Okay, so that's the full fork tube disassembly. So I've gone through and cleaned these really well. You can see all of the old oil is out of there. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We have our new three inch extended till death cycles damper rods here. And included with the kit, we have this damper rod piston ring. So we'll put the damper rod piston ring onto the damper rod. Now we're going to take the damper rod, put the rebound spring on it. Now we'll slide the damper rod down into the fork tube. And it's gonna come through the bottom of the fork tube here like this. Also on the fork tube, we have these fork tube bushings. So I'm gonna slide that on. Okay, we'll slide that fork tube bushing down into the groove that it rides in. All right, now we have what's called the oil lock piece. I think it's a terrible name, but that's what it's called. That goes over the top like this. In this case, it's not gonna stay on there. That's what the directions say to do. What's easier to do is actually slide this down into the slider. So we'll take this, you want it to be oriented so the open side is up. Slide that down in place and then it's got to ride down into a little groove like that. There we go. So it's centered down there. Now we'll keep it centered straight up and down like this and we'll slide the fork tube down over the top of it. Okay, we've got the fork tube into the slider the oil lock piece is lined up with the damper rod. Okay, so I'm gonna clean off the spring really quick, make sure there's nothing on there. As we're installing the spring, we want the side that has the more closely wound part of the spring going in first. We've got the open wound at the top. All right, so this is the fun part. We've got to install the fork cap. So I'm gonna pull the fork tube up while I push down on the spring, and we're gonna spin the fork tube and hopefully get everything aligned just like that. Now we'll tighten down this fork cap. I'm just gonna use a big adjustable wrench for now. All right, so we just got it snug down a little bit. We'll put it up on the bench now. With our fork cap on, we've got pressure on the damper rod. So now we'll put the damper rod Allen bolt in there. Now this has a new brass washer and this bolt came with that drag specialties kit. So we'll get that in there and start threading that down into place. And this is gonna hold the fork together. I'm gonna use my adjustable wrench to kind of snug that up. Now with that bolt in the bottom, we can remove the fork cap again. This is under pressure, so watch your eyes. 
I don't have it tightened down too much. Just gonna push down on it while I spin the fork tube until it comes apart. It'll be fairly obvious when that happens. There we go. Set the cap to the side now. You can get rid of that for a second. Now we'll assemble the rest of the seals in here. Now, this part is fairly important in the order that we do things. So we have the new slider bushing, this one. The wear side is on the inside as compared to the outside on the previous one we installed. Put a little fork oil on here, slide it over the top of the fork tube. Now we'll install the seal spacer. And the last item that we're gonna do now will be the oil seal. The oil seal is directional. If we look at the oil seal, there is an open side and there's a closed side. We're going to put the open side down. Closed side will be on the top. Now I've noticed with these forks uh, specifically, they are tapered at the top just a little bit. So this oil seal fits over fairly easily without cutting it. On other forks I've rebuilt, I've had to wrap it in plastic or put a plastic bag over it before I put it on just to not cut or tear the oil uh, seal. In this case, it goes on pretty easily. So we'll slide that down into place. So a little hack here that might save you a couple bucks. I don't generally avoid buying new tools, but I don't rebuild these very often. So you can spend the money on a fork seal driver we're not gonna do that today. Here's a little trick. So I'm gonna hold the fork tube up all the way extended. I've got some duct tape here. We'll take that duct tape. I'm gonna wrap it around about, oh, two inches above the fork seal with it fully extended. And then wrap it around, I don't know, 10, 15 times. You want a fair amount of width on this. This will be our fork seal driver. I've done this a bunch of times. It works fine. I haven't had any issues with it damaging the fork seals. And duct tape's not all that expensive. Fork seal drivers are 40 to $60, depending on what you want to do. So we'll take this, start driving that fork seal in. There is that uh, uh, slider bushing down there that has to go in first. So I'm gonna put this on the ground, put a little more effort into it. We'll get it down and into place. Okay, use a little brake clean on a rag. Cleaned all of that uh, residue off there from the tape. Now we have the retaining ring also included with the drag specialties kit. This just goes over the top and you pinch it, push it down in there. And then I just use a screwdriver, push it down until it clicks into the groove. When you're installing the retaining ring, you want to make sure that it fully seats down into the groove that's in there and kind of look around all of the sides, all of that groove and make sure that rings all the way in there. And it looks to be all the way in there. So we'll carry on with the next step. Okay. We have the dust ring or dust seal now that goes on top. Put a little fork oil on the inside of that seal. Go over the top of the fork tube. and start seating that down into place. You can use the fork seal driver for this. I find that's not entirely necessary. I can kind of push it down into place if I work around it. Now that we have that dust seal in, we need to put in our fork oil drain plug here. This is just a little JIS screw that goes at the bottom. If you don't put this in, the fork oil is gonna drain out. So make sure you put this in. Thread that all the way in. It's got a little copper washer on there that seals it up. So now we can go ahead and fill this with fork oil. According to our climber manual, we put uh, between 11.6 and 12.3 ounces. For this model of bike, 
it says 12.3 uh, 0.3 ounces uh, isn't very much, so I'm going to put 12 ounces in, and I think that's going to be just fine. That's what Tilda Cycle says, put 12 ounces in. So this is 20 weight oil. It's a little heavier. The 0.3 ounces I don't think is going to make that big of a deal. So here we go, 12 ounces. Everything's sealed up, and you want your fork tube fully extended. If it's shortened all the way, you may run the risk of some of that fork oil leaking out at the top. Then I hear it kind of bubble as it runs down there. Okay, our new O-ring that goes at the top of the fork cap, we'll put that on. Throw a little fork oil on there. That over the top of the cap. That seated in place. Okay, with our fork tube fully extended, again, we'll put our spring in, tight coils at the bottom. Now we're going to compress and tighten our fork cap on. So compress the spring. All right. And we'll tighten that down once we get it on the bike. So they have it, the fully rebuilt fork. Do the same thing on the other side. It's exactly the same process. Thanks for watching this episode. I hope you found some value in it and I will see you next week on weekend adventure rides.